Hey, it's Amy Newmark. I'm off for another week of working on my book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Maverick with a Mission. It's coming out in October, and I have to finish it. So this week, we're going to replay our second week of the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast. These are episodes that ran in late February and early March. Chances are you haven't heard these yet, so I hope you'll enjoy them. Changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. This podcast is my way of sharing with you everything I've learned as author, editor-in-chief, and publisher of Chicken Soup for the Soul for the last eight years. We like to say that we are changing your life one story at a time. And I know that's what's happened to me. These stories have definitely changed the way I manage my own life because storytelling brings lessons to life. And that's why we do what we do. We publish books that are filled with real life stories from real people, ordinary people who have had extraordinary experiences. They're all true stories, and that's why they have such an impact on us. So today I want to talk to you about a very important theme the power of forgiveness. We did a whole book on this topic last year, and it was eye-opening for me and for my whole editorial staff who worked on it. And we, we talked a lot about forgiveness in our own lives when we worked on this book and how freeing it is. So I love the idea of talking about the power of forgiveness because it's another one of those resolutions that's really easy for you. It doesn't require any more effort than just deciding. You just decide you're going to use the power of forgiveness, and one second later, it's done. So all you have to do is decide that enough is enough, that you want to move forward with your life, that you're not going to dwell on the past. This is the kind of resolution that everyone can achieve. It requires no time, no money, no hunger, no sweating, You don't even have to tell anyone you're doing it. You don't even have to talk to anybody to achieve the power of forgiveness because it all happens inside your own head. And when I put together this book about forgiveness, I was astounded by how many people decided to do this. They made that one second decision to do it. And then they talked about the freedom they felt after they forgave somebody. They hadn't realized how much they were harming themselves by holding on to all that resentment. Often the person that they were mad at didn't even know. So that person, the so-called bad person, was blissfully unaware that anybody was mad at him or her and was getting on with his or her own life, while the injured, angry person was the only one who was actually suffering. My co-author for that book, Anthony Anderson, who's the star of Blackish, he shared his own true story, the forgiveness of Robert and me. And his story was about finally having a meaningful conversation with his mostly absentee biological father. He had that conversation right before his father, Robert, died. They talked for hours, and Anthony says that it changed his life. It was so liberating. Anthony says in his story, I sleep peacefully at night knowing that I was able to release my father from a burden of guilt, as well as releasing me from the burden of anger I had towards him. And Anthony comments on why we need to use the power of forgiveness and says, life is fleeting. We need to live in the moment and love in the moment. There was a story in the power of forgiveness that I want to share with you today. It's by one of our regular contributors, Joe Rector, and it's called Coaching the Coach. And it's about what happened when Joe resigned as coach of his son's baseball team. He resigned after some parents complained that their sons were not getting enough playing time. And Joe just couldn't take it anymore. So he resigned. And the father who took his spot as coach then took revenge on Joe by not letting Joe's son play for the rest of the season. Joe was furious His son had been benched for no good reason. And Joe says, I held my tongue for a while, but eventually the injustice of it all got to me. 
I couldn't believe that my son was kicked off a team I'd helped to build. And he goes on to say, for the next couple of years, I couldn't even think of that other coach without becoming so angry that my blood pressure spiked. When I saw him at games throughout the coming seasons, I turned and walked away, refusing to speak to a man who I hated for the pain he'd inflicted on my son. So baseball was ruined for Joe. He didn't enjoy watching his son anymore. He was always fuming when he went to the games. It really took away one of the pleasures of being a father, which is going to your son's games. Joe remained angry for years. And then his son realized it and one day said to him, Dad, it's time to quit being mad. I'm over it. I'm okay now and I don't care. And then Joe realized that his son was right and he just dropped it. He forgave the other father. And he says, almost immediately, I felt as if a huge weight had been lifted from my shoulders. He was finally able to enjoy baseball again. He realized the only person he had been hurting during all those years of being angry was himself. It was really a great example for me of how the power of forgiveness can change your own life because you are the person who is most hurt by the act of not forgiving someone else. There was a poem that I included in this book about forgiveness. It's called The Road Ahead, and it's by Christina Gaglioni. And here's a couple of great phrases from the poem. Anger begets anger, and rage stumbles forward, steamrolling good as well as bad. And I thought that was such a great mental image, rage steamrolling forward and steamrolling over good things as well as bad. And it really does make the point. Forgiveness brings us peace and rage and anger just bring more rage and anger. They just bring more of the same negativity. So the next time we get together, I'm going to pass on another great tip for living the life you want. I know forgiveness was a wonderful tip, but here comes another one. And it's a way to win the lottery without ever playing it. I'm Amy Newmark. Thank you for listening to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast today. If you'd like to read more stories and tips about forgiveness from Chicken Soup for the Soul, The Power of Forgiveness, go to our website, chickensoup.com.